Some people will never accept the truth because they are afraid. Maybe there is nothing we can do about that except to plead with them to keep their eyes open. For when their eyes are open they may truly see and the truth may come to them. Which leads us to one final incredible piece of the scientific puzzle. The VP8 Image Analyzer is a computer that scientists use to take topographical maps of the moon and other things. It analyzes light and dark areas of an image to determine the three-dimensional qualities of the object in the image. So for example, it can tell us how deep the craters are on the moon. The VP8 analyzer needs photographs to be taken in a particular way in order to be accurate. A normal photograph fed into the machine will just display a jumbled mess of light and dark patches because the light and dark areas of a regular photograph have little to do with how far away the subject is. Well, just out of curiosity, a group of scientists at the Los Alamos National Laboratories fed a photograph of the shroud through a VP8 image analyzer. This is what they saw. The topographical image of the shroud created by the VP8 computer shows very clearly the image of a man in three dimensions. The image is darker where his body would have touched the cloth directly, like his nose, and fainter where it would have been further away, like his neck. In fact, the VP8 map of the shroud shows the image of the man more clearly than ever before, and in doing so proves once and for all that the Shroud of Turin can not possibly have been made using photographic methods. In fact, this discovery convinced the scientists at Los Alamos that the image on the shroud must have been formed by the cloth being draped over a real human being. The Shroud of Turin is a truly unique artefact, a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional piece of cloth. This in itself is something of a miracle. It suggests that the image on the shroud was intended to be viewed as more than just a picture. It suggests that the shroud itself is trying to say something to those willing to look hard enough. But what? Renowned Christian scholar and medical doctor Richard Kent has some thoughts on the matter. Jesus said the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see, though hearing, they may not understand. Could the Shroud of Turin be a parable for modern times, a physical manifestation of Jesus' promise that those who seek shall find, that those who believe in him will understand the secrets of the kingdom? You know, God is sending us messages every day, letting us know that he is here and watching over us. But many people never see or hear those messages, because they're simply not looking or listening for the truth. I think that if you look again at the image on the shroud with your mind and heart open, the truth of the matter couldn't be clearer. The shroud's image is, is not a really bright, distinct image that pops out at you. It's certainly not anything like any painting or photograph. And interesting little story, my, when my son saw it with me in 1998, he was 18 at the time, we stood before the actual shroud in the Turin Cathedral. And uh, being a tall kid, he leaned down and whispered in my ear, that's not a painting. Well, I didn't want to disrespect those who were there, you know, in the cathedral. So we, I waited until we exited the cathedral. And I turned to him and I said, David, what prompted you to say that? What, how do you reach that conclusion that it's not a painting just from looking at it? And he says, look, he says, artists spend their whole lives trying to perfect their art, their craft, so that when they paint something, it's clear, it's understandable, it's obvious. The shroud is so subtle that at the distance that we were standing, we could see the image distinctly. But as you get closer, for example, within arm's length of the Shroud of Turin, you have to keep standing away from it, stepping away from it again and saying, well, what exactly am I looking at? Because it's so subtle. And the closer you get, the harder it is to see. 
So I think that when, when you look at the shroud itself and you realize the subtlety of what's there, why would an artist even conceive of doing something like this when we have literally scores of replicas made of the Shroud of Turin by artists, professional artists, who were allowed to view the Shroud itself and then paint their replica. And no one has even come close. They're cartoon-like by comparison to the subtleties and the detail within the image of the man on the Shroud. And it's, you know, it's, it's funny how sometimes the skeptics will say, well, you know, the Shroud is too perfect, therefore it must be a fake. Well, what's interesting about that is if the shroud were less perfect, meaning the science of the shroud were less perfect, they would say, well, it's not perfect, so it must be a fake. So there is absolutely no way, apparently, to please the skeptics who will forever look at the Shroud of Turin and say, it's a fake. It's a medieval hoax. And so in the end, I think maybe the most important thing about the shroud is it's an enigma that continues to baffle us in certain areas. Uh, you get chemistry right and the physics isn't right. You get the physics right and the chemistry seems wrong. It's, it seems as if it defies us. And perhaps it's meant to do so. Perhaps the real value of the shroud is in making us think about it. Is it real? And if it is, what does it mean? And so in the end, I think each one of us has to search in our own hearts, to look at the shroud and study it and study its image and then we have to decide in our own hearts, what does this really mean? I don't think it's something that, that can be done externally. I think it's something that each of us must do in our own hearts. And I think that may be the only place we'll ever find the answer to the Shroud of Turin.